So welcome to the basic sets for Affinity Designer on the iPad and this time we're going to look at drawing straight lines on the iPad in Affinity Designer of course. In this tutorial we'll learn how to draw a straight line using the pen tool. Plain lines, dashed lines and lines with sculpted ends. You might think this is fairly straightforward and it is but there are some little tricks that you'll pick up. So set up a suitable canvas for this. Place a rectangular object on the canvas. In other words, drag out a rectangle. Launch Affinity Designer, create a document, pick the rectangle tool and draw out a rectangle to fill the space. Select the pen tool. It's down the left hand side and it has four different modes. Now you go down the bottom there to where the little pop-up context menu is and pick the line mode. Now click at a point on the document where you want the line to start. Then while holding the start point in place and holding two fingers on the document at the same time, drag the line to where you want it to end. Displaying the grid can help with placement of this line. But if that doesn't make sense initially, you'll find this is really a lot easier with something like an Apple Pencil on the iPad. Hold, your, hold two fingers of your left hand, for example, at the same time as you hold the pen on the screen to start the line. If you put your fingers on first, your line will start there. Put your pen on first, where you're going to start the line, then generally place your two fingers on the screen from your left hand. Hold them on and then drag your line along to the end. That forces it to be absolutely horizontal. And even if you try and drag it up and down, that won't happen. Of course you can draw a straight line without your fingers on the screen, but you could end up going off in a different direction. So to get it absolutely horizontal, put your pen on the screen, hold two fingers on the screen and then drag the line to the right. If you find that too awkward, draw your line as near as you want it, left to right, then set its angle and length in the transform tool. So you click on the transform tool, that's that little square inside a square on the right hand side, and you can see you've got the position and you've got your X and Y um, starting points. I've got minus 0, 0.0 there, well that should be actually, I don't know why it's showing a minus sign, it's just 0, 0.0, so it's no angle. And that's what you want. You can set it there, or you can hold your fingers on the screen. It depends how comfortable you are with that. Now release the pen at the point where you intend the line to end. All the while, notice the stroke tool, which currently has the value of one pixel. And this is where you set the thickness, type, color and other properties of that line. And here we get our first horizontal line. And you can see it there, it's one pixel and it's left to right. Set the thickness of a line, tap on the line icon on the studio toolbar. You know where that is, the arrows pointing to it, just under the color uh, dot. Slide the width control to the desired thickness. So let's set it to 4 pixel, that's what I've got here. A 4 pixel line is wide enough to see what you're doing and not too wide to look very awkward. Now to set that line colour in the context toolbar that you've got down the bottom, click on the stroke swatch and then the colour panel. There are several selection preferences for colour sliders. Here I've selected the colour wheel. Pick a desired colour from the wheel. That's fairly straightforward. You've got line that first came up when you selected the pen tool and line and you've got a 4 pixel width so you can adjust the width down there or from the slider up on the right. And the colour of course you can select there. Drawing a vertical line is just the same. Click at a point on the document where you want the line to start then while holding the start point in place and holding two fingers on the document at the same time, drag the line to where you want it to end. Again displaying the grid can help with placement. 
And again, if you find that too awkward, draw your line as near as you want it, then set its angle and length in the transform tool. Now here you can see I've set the line at minus 90. Now you can see the little signpost or the traffic sign that stands up from the line there. If you put plus 90, that will swing the line the other way. So I've had to put minus 90 to swing the line that way because its anchor point is in the top left hand side of the canvas. You can, you can, I would suggest that you should experiment with that anchor point to see what happens when you change the position of the anchor point. It's quite an interesting effect, but we won't go into it here. Now for dotted lines, pick the Move tool that highlights the, the um, frame you want and click on the line you wish to turn into a dotted line. Click on the line icon again, just below the color swatch. A stroke panel opens up and you can choose the dashed line style from the style field. That's the one with all the little dots in it. Now for the cap style of the dash you can select either round or butt or square and here I selected the butt end, that's the cap of the line, it's the end of the line so they're little squares all the way down there. Now there's only one more thing to do and that's set the gap between the dots. Our dotted line at the moment looks like this, but if we change dash to 3 and gap to 2, it changes the style of the dash line. There, that's the dash pattern tool at the bottom of the stroke panel. And the dash number sets the length and the gap. And I've set the dash to 3 and the gap between them to 2. So the, the dash is slightly longer than the gap. And that's really all there is to it for this little exercise. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next basic exercise.